Hey everyone, it's Jim T. Graham with RC Groups. Jason, I got to tell you something now that my big head is in the frame. Uh, last week we had a friend of, of RC Groups, uh, Lane from Lane's Planes on, and there's a great shot of him smiling with that truck in the back. And I have been using the system at YouTube to make that screenshot because it's so awesome, right? Yeah. I mean, no one needs to see my head anymore in these <laughs> YouTube videos. And, uh, it just won't do it. So I guess I'm going to have to go steal the screenshot and paste it and all that stuff. But I just want you to know, I was trying to get Lane on there all week. Dope. That's I all right. I didn't notice it until I went to start this live broadcast. And uh, I was like, it's still my head. What the heck? I've done it three times. <laughs> so uh, just while everyone's logging on, what's new? What's new? Um, it's kind of hot. I was up pretty early this morning. I got up around six and it was very nice outside. I have to say. Yeah. It's been hot, but it hasn't been humid, which yes. is strange. Yeah, so everybody it's keeps really saying, nice hot. Like uh, yesterday, I was out and people are like, "It's hot, it's hot," and I'm like, "It's not that hot," you know? Yeah, like you could go out and do stuff and not sweat. Right. I love low humidity. It's awesome. What else? Um, I've just been here doing my thing. Taking, I found a snapping turtle in the backyard. That's the second snapping turtle in two weeks. Bang! The other one got fly, like flight test. Yeah, make it fly. Uh, not, <laughs> once again, we're talking while live viewers are logging on, so I, I feel like I got a little leeway. We had a big flood a couple of three weeks ago, and I found one wedged between the house and the fence. Right, the dogs are barking at oh. it, but it was behind the fence. So I got a shovel. And I picked it up and I put it in the creek, right? And it's very happy. So today I look out the window and I see this thing in the yard. And I think, is that another snapping turtle? And I walked out. The dogs are now attacking it. So I run at the dogs with my shovel and say, off, off. Cause I thought they're going to get bit in the nose. You know, <laughs> you know what that, snap, that. that snapping turtle did. He leapt at me. He says, I'm a turtle. I'm a turtle. Now he's in the air. Holy cow. He's like, I'm not saying he left three feet or anything, but he left a good eight inches at my leg. But wow. with his big head, you know, like, Arf. and I, I'm sure the neighbors are like, Jim T's yelling to himself in the yard again. <laughs> I freaked out, man. <laughs> Jumping snapping turtles. Never heard of that. And then I got the shovel and I put him in the creek and I don't know how he got in the yard. And then last night, uh, the dog, my Ruby ran outside for 0.3 seconds, came back in fully sprayed by a skunk. So fun. So we got to do that. I took a picture of her as an ashamed dog, but now let's launch into RC news and not snapping turtle.com hashtag. Although that's a great name for a website. Snapping turtle.com. I've been snapping. A big name for a band too. the, the, the Terrapins or something. <laughs> um, we have many things to talk about today. Jason Cole's with us. We might have uh, Lane back as a special guest. I sent him an invite. You know, I'll verify that in a minute to make sure it went out and all that good stuff. And um, Jason went to an event last week. Uh, unfortunately, I could not go because of marriage and love and God and uh, all those things combined together in one night where I wasn't able to. Uh, I had to attend and I did. It was. Beautiful. But uh, how was your, tell us, start at the beginning. First Man. of all, you and Mike traveled together. Wow. Um, we didn't travel together, but we traveled. Um, let me screen share. Are you reading breaking news or something? No, I am uh, trying to get to, well, how come it's not showing my, hmm, I'm doing this on my laptop. <laughs> it looks like you're looking at everyone closer. Oh, hey guys, how are we doing? <laughs> Um, bummer. It's not letting me do an application window. Maybe if I switch to that, does that work? Oh yeah. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. Sweet. Okay. All so right. let, let me start out. First of all, I couldn't go. And I was like, you know, you should go as Mike. Cause Mike Hines worked with both of us and he's a good friend of Kim and David Payne's at horizon and Mike could go. And then I called Jason and I said, so you and Mike are driving up. And he said, no. Tell everyone why Mike drove up by himself. Because he wanted to bring a bunch of stuff to fly. Yeah, he brought like 9,000 airplanes and <laughs> he wanted to leave at four in the morning. That's right. He did. He he left way early. Like I was like, oh, man, he beat me by a long shot. But it's not a bad drive. It was fun. I got to listen to some Harry Potter audiobook on the way up. It was good. Oh. There you go. 
oblivioso. I don't know. Whatever they say. Anyway, <laughs> this event. Oh my gosh. I don't know how it was last year. I wasn't there. I saw your pictures. It looked like a lot of fun. But I it, I had no idea how cool it was going to be and how much fun it was going to be. And I didn't really – I brought like a couple things to fly, but I was mainly there just to see it. So I went in with this expectation like I heard about you had last right. year where they were like, Jim, come fly this, come fly this, you know, check out all this new stuff and everything. And it wasn't that. And that's okay That's because that's one thing. So, so let me just defend myself here. Um, last year I went and that was a lot of in office. I was hanging out with the flight test crew. We're seeing new products and designs that would be out a year later. And, uh, yeah. and then, so I thought, okay, that's what this is I actually scheduled to be able to go down for half the week and hang out. But then it was not that it was a fly. -in. Yeah. So I was like, man, I'm going to get to fly like a $20,000 Havoc jet. You know, this is going to be awesome. I'm going to try all these new things, but so I, once I like realized, okay, that's not what this is. Then I was like, all right, this is a, basically it's a fun fly and an RC show. I think I said it, you can see it right here on my article. It was really a celebration of RC. They had everything. I mean, everything, things I didn't know existed in the RC world. I saw at this event and mainly I'm talking about the car stuff because I've seen everything in aircraft, but we'll get to the aircraft in a second. The car side of this facility, it's on the right-hand side of this uh, screenshot, if you can see it. Let me, does that zoom in for you at all? Yes. Cool. So the right-hand side, I've got some more pictures below we'll go into. But they had a billion RC tracks, and that's, that's not even uh, an exaggeration. They had so many RC tracks, I couldn't believe it. So way over here, you've got this, the Team Losi. They had the, the TRL Cup here. They were running these giant gas and electric eight-scale buggies. Uh, hardcore racing, like top guys in the world, amazing to watch and drive, really cool. They had like a this figure eight was like a bashing course for uh, you could they did like demolition derby on it. You can they had like little mini jumps, um, monster trucks running around. Now I don't you can't see it, but like right here, this blew me away. Well, two things blew me away. I was like I didn't know this was a thing. This was you know at like real full size monster truck rallies where they have like their races where they, they start on a starting tree and they go down and turn around and come back and jump over something and turn around and hit a jump and then turn around and race yeah. back through the thing for a timed course, like a head to head. They had a minute, like a one tenth scale version of that. And they had monster trucks like RC monster trucks they had the starting tree and they would line people up and they had an announcer booth and they would run all these races all day long. I didn't know that existed way over here. There was a, rc tractor pull track with the whole like pulling to toe in the trailer and the the weight slides forward to dump down on the sled i've I mean, never heard of that true to scale it was amazing i could not believe everything that they had they had an amazing rock crawling course um man just so much cool stuff and then kind of my favorite part of the the track uh was they had this pro line alley uh this was like a freestyle uh, just a bunch of jumps, um, all kinds of different jump sizes and styles. And this, there's like, these are two cars right here and you could jump over cars. Um, so I brought my rock ray and then like early Friday morning when really nothing was happening yet, I grabbed my truck and went out. I was like the only one there and I just ripped it up man, was jumping and doing backflips and just having a blast with the rock ray. Um, so that was amazing. Then you've got the main runway, uh, RC flying, basically when they weren't doing demos, uh, like for the noontime show, or they had a couple of special events, um, but mainly it was just open flying. So you could, it didn't have to be a horizon plane. You could bring whatever you wanted, fly it, helis, airplanes, jets, sailplanes, everything. It was so cool. And they had all like the latest airplanes out. Uh, why don't you scroll down to some pictures? We'll scroll down to some pictures. There's the, they had the Raminator truck right there. Pretty cool. Here's some aerial views. You can see more of the uh, tracks there they did have the indoor facility with tower hobbies which probably wasn't there last year <laughs> so uh, they, they were not. actually selling products so the public can come out and uh buy you know stuff i actually had a guy come up to me he bought an airplane and he saw me and i maybe i looked official or something i was wearing my blue rc group shirt which kind of looks like a horizon mm. shirt i and noticed that Hey, we just bought this. We went and did the try me station and we just wanted to see if you could help me get this flying. I was like, 
sure. So we went out in the field and I helped them get it trimmed out and flying and, and taught a guy how to fly airplanes right there. So it was really cool. Um, but that was all in this Eli field hangar. So they had a, like a drone demo station and, and product on display, but then also products you could buy. Let's hold on one minute. What's happening lane. Hey, what's going hey, on guys. Hey, what's up buddy. You got the front end under that, uh, 63. Uh, actually I kind of came to a stopping point. The, all my parts weren't in. So I decided to start cleaning, uh, 55 years worth of grease off the bottom of the car. Uh, I could have had it done today, but I'm going to wait on uh, strut rod bushings to get here. Uh, and they won't get here till Tuesday. So, well, you're going to enjoy this rock crawler or this monster truck. Uh, you have video of that monster truck, Jason? Uh, you kind of. It's it's all in amongst my like seven, eight minute long video. Your montage. Yeah. Nice. That's probably got a big old Hemi in it. It was loud, dude. I've got some pictures of the back end of it with the exhaust tips hanging out. It was pretty cool. That's cool. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty. So they also had a, a whole section for uh, drone racing. You had a nice course. They had a good setup. They had spectator uh, TV screen where you could see all the live feeds from the competitors. Nice. Um, they were have. They had like when you signed up and registered, they give you a poker chip and. You could bet on races. You could bet against the house. You could bet on pilots. You could bet on like anything. They just had a, they made it a lot more fun than let's sit around drone race crash and then wait. So they made it a lot more interesting. That's than, very than, interesting. That yeah. is a good way for uh, getting the the viewing people uh, energized for yeah. the. Yeah, that was pretty fun. So here's one of the figure eight tracks. Um, here's that pro line alley I was telling you about with all these jumps, and they were big jumps. Like you could get serious air. And I, so I've got a story. Um, they took one of these jumps. I don't remember which one. Click on they, that picture. Boom. Bam. They took one of these jumps. Not this one. Oh yeah. My kid was there. Right. What? what? The kid that was trying to do the, uh, world record leap. Is that what you're going to talk oh, about? Well, they, they were doing, yeah. They, well, I don't know about world record, but they were just, they had a, a long distance jumping contest. So they took one of these ramps, stuck it on the end of the runway, and they were literally getting guys on the far end of the runway, driving their cars, ramping up to full speed, getting 80, 90 miles an hour, and hitting this ramp. And it was launching it. You can see this field here. Are you seeing my mouse? Yeah. So way over here, this is not even the edge of the runway. The runway is way off to the right. And then they were hitting that run ramp off the runway and going like 30, 40 feet high, some people were landing in this field. Yeah, in the beans. The guys that hit it hard were jumping way across the ditch into the cornfield. I hope there was a good prize because otherwise you're tearing up your truck or car for no reason. Oh, there was <laughs> definitely some damage. In, in it, there's a lot of glory, though. There, It looked like there were more people there this year than last based on the car. It was epic. I mean, that was so fun. You have little rock crawler tracks here. They had little try me stations where kids can play. Are those three D printed uh, things right there? They kind of looked like it. I doubt they are, but they're probably just some rubberized. Let's remember to talk about our three D printers as requested by a viewer. There you go. So here's Vendor Row. They had uh, you know FMS. They had the flight test guys out there. It was great to see Josh and Austin and the crew. Um, this was on a Friday. Looks like this wasn't very busy yet. Um, but Saturday was the real big day. Whoops. What did I do? What so you got to hang out with the flight test boys. Have you, have you hung out with them before? Uh, yeah, I've known Josh for a while, uh, through RC groups. Uh, we sent him some products and do some videos with back in the day. So we, we kind of go way back. And so it was good to hang out and chat and catch up and told him I'd like to make it up to a flight test event someday and, and, you know, hear about it, but like to go experience it. So I wrote Mr. Austin oh, Fury just this morning. Did you? Nice. Awesome. So, you know, we got David Payne here. They had a they had turbine jets. They had everything. They brought out Jace Ducey Ooh, came look at out. Those white David Payne legs. Boom. Mm. You know, it is uh Illinois. So yeah. You know, watching, watching, watching Jace fly up at MEF, uh, which is the Midwest Electric Fun Fly in uh uh Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, last year, watching him fly, absolutely amazing. There's very few pilots, and I don't mean any disrespect to any pilots, but there's very few pilots that I have I watch and actually walk up to them and tell them how impressed I was. But that <laughs> kid, uh, just watching him fly, his style of flying is 
absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, he doesn't just bring it in and hover and torque roll it around, uh, which, okay, neat, but right. it gets kind of old. This kid is phenomenal. High speed, high jinx. Yes. And his, his, his mom and his dad and him are just absolutely great people. We sat and had s'mores and, and beer with them until, you know, midnight, uh, that night just had a great time. Jace is probably the best on the circuit right now, as far as be at, not just, I mean, it's he hard to say that yeah, he, freestyle aerobatics, he owns it, but he, he, as far, so I don't want to say he's the best pilot, but for what he does, he's traveling the world and, and representing the hobby all over the place. In fact, I just wrote an article calling, talking about him as an ambassador. So yeah, let's he, see some of these truck picks. Yeah, man. Look at this thing. Look at those skinned out fenders. That's pretty That's awesome. Ridiculous. And then they had this Jeep on there. I didn't see the cow horns. So, I mean, Lane will love this. See these, see these, uh, machine guns. Mini yeah. Guns. It's connected to the turbo exhaust. Nice. <laughs> so when he revs it up and those turbos start spooling, these things start spinning. <laughs> That's so, amazing. Great. <laughs> I'm really thinking uh, GTA, uh, Grand Theft Auto 5, the the most sold uh, entertainment product in the history of the world. And so you get vehicles like this. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sidebarring here. But my question is, how is GTA affecting hot rodding? Uh, you know, like I am now seeing cars that I know were influenced by the video game. But also, I got to think that somehow we could utilize a game like GTA to get people interested in RC since they're also flying helis and planes. Well, yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. My my 16-year-old, he's flown two or three airplanes in his life, and he's flown quads once or twice. He's pretty good with quads and helicopters. But he walked out here, and I, I got a night vapor, and he walked out here yesterday, saw the vapor sitting here, turned on, and just started flying around the shop. <laughs> I was like, this sucks. It ah. took me took me forever to learn to fly and he's just cruising around going under my car lift and just i'm like man kids kids aren't even fair pete goldsmith and i ate mexican food at uh toledo and we got the night vapors the night vapor <laughs> that's, a that's a different kind if that had lights on it you had a problem <laughs> i looked at it. here's a bit of the rock crawling course Damn, that looks like a construction thing gone wrong. New tire, super, super professional. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Here's the uh, racing stand for the TRL Cup racing racing stands. It's a great place to take photos up there too. Yeah. Uh, what else is cool? What's this? What's this? Uh, C10. Uh, that? Yeah. Yeah, I figured you'd like that. Sure. They just had. I don't know what it was there for. It was just there on display. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty funny. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, here's, yeah, this is the monster was, part of that monster truck track. I saw So they had these guys. Oh, they're crushing they the light tree and the lines and they could do that course. Is that Kimmy right there? That's Miss Kiss Pain, Kim Payne right there. Kiss Payne. Kiss Payne. This is the registration uh, booth. Oh, even Kim doesn't have a tan. Now that's something I haven't seen before. It was hotter there than it was uh, back here when we were there. All right. This is amazing. It's an ASH uh, 26, I think. Um, newest, like, cell plane from Horizon. It's a, I want to say it's a, like a six meter wingspan. It's giant. It's massively huge. And it's like $2,600. For the kit, I, I figured it'd be the same as the Radian. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 150 right. bucks, 200 yeah. dollars. Yeah. yeah. Nah, but it's amazing. I mean, it's everybody's going nuts over this in the sailplane world because of the quality and the price and the completeness of it. Um, it's a pretty big step forward for big, you know, scale sailplanes. So it looks amazing. The demos are awesome. Ali was flying it. This is one of his projects. Ali, what a nice guy. Ali's a good dude. They had a big giant banner towing behind a cub. and they Everyone were says they're going to do it, but they never do. They never, in the 20 years of me going to events, they actually, but they actually made this work. They did it. You know, and the field's kind of close to like a major interstate. And so they were flying it, you know, along the interstate. To kind of, it was like being at a, the beach and having airplanes fly down the beach. And I see those dual parachutes on the back for a full, you know, banner fulfillment there. Wow. Now, so you've never seen anybody tow a banner at an event? Jim? Not successfully. I've heard people threaten to do it like 
every Joan all somebody's like a word, blah, 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 but I've never seen the banners fly. All right. Well, you've just given me a mission. There you go. Uh, yeah. It can't be a banner though. It has to be a CNC cut sign. Oh, wow. That's going to be heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I can do, I can CNC cut vinyl. <laughs> Yeah, Oops, I wonder if I can tell one uh, 150 mile an hour behind a CUDA. Dang, yeah. Heck That's yeah. a pretty small truck. That doesn't look big. This, guy, this guy's 7'4". Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this looks street manageable to me. No, it's it's a big full size. Hey, uh, click on Chase for a second, and we'll just note that the trim scheme there is based off of Jim Burke, the former owner of RC Group's uh, plane that he tours all over the world with. That's right. That's their extra. So is that a P forty? That would be a P forty. Ooh, oh, that's Dan. He's Lieutenant Dan. Dan. I get it now. I didn't. It took me one second to get Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> I've, I've seen his pictures of that one on Facebook. That's a good looking airplane. Oh. Hey, we have Steve Wattenberg. We have Cyclo Cy Jones Jones. We have uh, Hornet NZ. Mike McD. Holy crap. Mike McDougal, by the way, as you may or may not know, uh, blew his hands, he blew his hands off in a uh, Chimera. It was a incident, wasn't it? Uh, it was, what's I call it a Chimera. It's not that. What's that thing called that you burn stuff in that you buy for your girlfriend that's made out of clay? What? A Chimera? Oh, a Chimera? Kennel? Kennel? Hold on. My wife's saying it. What? A Chimera. A Chalupa. A Chimera <laughs> caught Mike's hands on fire. He had to have skin grafts. And uh, man. he wrote me the other day about a review and I thought, well, I guess he's doing all right. I have been checking up on him, but definitely glad to hear he's doing, you know, getting better. Yep, he just wrote Chiminera. That means his hands are working. Yeah. That's awesome. He's, yeah. Welcome, welcome back, Mike, man. We're we're wishing the best for you for a quick recovery, man. You know, I'm gonna stop you right here, Jason. I gotta tell a story because it's tragic. And hopefully it won't get me in trouble. We need to uh un check check un uh I was uh, this is a cautionary tale for uh, uh definitely everyone in the live chat based on my experience with y'all. But uh, you may have never heard the story, anybody, because I never told it because it was too scary and freaky for me to let out. I said no one talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it right now on the RC Groups podcast. I was in the hell wagon at a show eating pizza, but I was hiding because I knew that if other people saw me eating this pizza, that my pizza would be gone in seconds. <laughs> and uh, me and then the guy, the other guy that I was with was in the, tr we we're eating pizza, watching people at a fire. And I saw one of the guys take a uh, nitro bottle full of nitro fuel for glow planes, and he was glugging it towards the fire. Oh, no. So at this point, I say to my friend, who I will not name, hey, that doesn't look like a good idea. I probably didn't even get those words out of my mouth before the fire went up the uh, nitro into the can or in, it was a plastic jug into the jug. And then blew out like a cannon and caught three people on fire. Oh my gosh. And it wow. was, have you never heard this story, Jason? I, I think I have, but okay. it's coming back. And it's like, well, it, I don't know if you know, but this stuff is like napalm. It just stuck to them. One guy did the right thing and dropped, but two guys took off running and started really lighting up on fire. So I had a, I always carried a, a fire extinguisher by the door of the hell wagon. I ripped the fire extinguisher off the wall. Me and Bryce, we, I said, I'll take that one. And it, we hook up after each one of these guys. And I am about to light this guy up with this fire extinguisher. And right as I am, he slid in the dewy grass and I fell down next to him and we're face to face. Look like we're going to kiss. And I said, are you okay, man? And he said, yeah. And he had like, when he fell, he put himself out. So these guys got a little bit of burns, nothing enough to be worried about. But uh, that's when I realized that uh, playing around with uh, blow fuel at a fire is a bad idea. I tried to burn my house down once. Had a two-gallon can of gas pouring it into the carburetor of a car trying to keep it running. Okay. My buddy in there hits the gas pedal. It backfires through the carburetor, lights the two gallons of gas on fire. So I did what every smart person does when your family's around you and you've got two gallons of gas on fire. And I slid it across the sidewalk to get it away from everybody so I could put it out. And it tipped over into the cedar bush in front of my house <laughs> so now the car's on fire the gas is on fire the bush is on fire <laughs> it's a bad day uh, but 
it did not explode and cover people with nitromethane. So it, I, I was I had a better day. I was in the backyard watching a neighbor who I had never talked to, but I he had a huge pile of leaves and a, and then I realized he had gas in his hand. Now I'm not smartest guy, but I'm smart enough to know what gas can do. And he put a lot of gas and, he, and then his son walks up. Who's like a teenager. And I was about to yell stop, but he dropped the match and they all disappeared in a <laughs> big gas ball flame. I'm talking the sun was gone. And then when the gas ball flame dispersed, the sun, all I could see was him run into the house. Uh, With no they, eyebrows. Yeah, I guess they were okay. <laughs> I learned also, I had a line of leaves that I had raked up at my place in Alabama, poured gas all across the top of it, all down the line. Well, as gas sits on a hot day, it disperses and the fumes spread out. So when you do drop the match, not only is it just that line of gas you dumped, but it also spreads out about another five feet on either side. Uh, that was interesting. So be careful when you do that. I was at a show. Sorry, this popped in my head. I was at a show about 20 feet, 30 feet away from the fire. And then out, it was nighttime and out of nowhere. And I won't say where this field was. Out of nowhere, a guy ran up to me and started kicking me in the leg furiously. And I said, what the heck, man? And the dude said, yo, Billy Hell, you're on fire, dude. And I looked <laughs> down and somebody had poured nitro from the fire to my pants. And then they went back to the fire while everybody watched. And then they lit the fire and it slowly made its way and, lit and caught my leg on fire. Now, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I was <laughs> mad, man. I've never seen you sit still long enough to do that, though. <laughs> it was late. Uh, we we then walked through the fire later in the night, uh, me and Chris Henson. Well, that's okay. Probably. Back to Jason. <laughs> <laughs> this concludes our fire episode. There you go. Well, here's a photo of a dude jumping two cars with a RC truck. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. Did he make it? Did he actually land that jump? I don't think so. Oh, he actually cleared the uh, other ramp. Yeah, he landed on his wheel on the other side of the grass. But pretty cool. Uh, what else is cool? Hey, DLGs, always a good time. Here's David's Blanick with the turbine engine oh, on it. Wow. And he was wearing it out, too. Gilligan is flying, it, it looks like. <laughs> Yes, there was a crowd. Of, yeah, crowd photos. It's pretty crowd, big crowd. crowd of people's. My favorite. Let me see if I can find it. Because you, I don't know if you know, but when you know, you know. When you do, you will. When you do, you will. Uh, I've got to have one. There's one. I know there's one for sure. Well, you, I saw a couple of cool photos, a couple of sweet airplanes. Not, oh, and didn't you have the Optera there? No, I'm looking for something specific. Specific. Of the crowd. I mean, maybe you could see it here a little bit. Not really what I was looking for. But, uh, come on, if I can only just find it when I want it. This will be good enough. There's like a billion Amish people that came to this event. Amish people are into RC, I have found. They are totally into it, man. And they were like, it was just all these uh, overalls and the hair things. It was just like a sea of them. You can see a bunch already. And this, this wasn't even the big day. But I was surprised to see so many like interested in technology, you know? Well, it, yep. It is what it is. So what else what? we got? Let's look at the Optera. Where is it? Wait, what the heck is that with the, where, where, where? it's a truck with a, like a snow rail thing. This behind. Thing? Yeah. 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 That's a nice for going on the ice. And wow, snow. man. See, that's if, the kind of RC truck I need. It's got rust on it. Yeah, it's got yeah. patina. And it looks like it's a Dodge. I dated a girl named Patina. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even go there. <laughs> and then what's on the table there? Helis. This is some uh, Castle Creations was oh. there. Oh. All the castle goodies. Who was there from Castle? Nobody I recognized. They were from the car side. Oh. Primarily, so I didn't, didn't see the, the Steve and the normal people. Now, was Jace the Ace wowing them at noontime demos? He sure was. And here's the uh, the new X-Cub. Ah, this is the new hot this thing. This is awesome. This is one Mike Hines wants to review. Cool. When, when it becomes they, when available, I... they towed up that ASH with it, and it's just awesome. I mean, this thing is sweet. It's another alley thing. 
I'm going to have to give Jay some lessons one day. On? You know, flying. Flying. There you go. Teach him Teach him how. He's yeah. he's all right. Yeah. <laughs> you can teach him how to fly upside down. He needs some work. Yeah, yeah. Every time we review a plane, he'll, like, fly about two seconds, and then he's inverted over the runway. <laughs> I let him fly a kudo when we were out there at MEF, him and his dad. Yeah, uh, cool. They lasted about uh, a minute each and crashed them. So Jim was telling me about this event and how crazy windy it always is in Horizon. Luckily, the weather was fantastic. It was just uh, hot. It was like 90-something, but it was, wasn't very windy. But we did have, like, on Saturday afternoon, late evening, we had, like, a quick little 15-minute spat of rain, which created some nice action oh, with the uh, Cirrus Air. On that's the not good. <laughs> he was just going right through it, man. Have you seen the video of the guy pressure washing his airplanes? <laughs> it, it says you're doing it wrong. <laughs> hey, here's that uh here's that tractor pull track. That's awesome. And they they were like watering it down. They had a giant roller, they were smoothing it out. They would they had like a tape measure that's not here yet. I caught it before they were starting, but they could, you know, measure the distances. Pretty freaking sweet. Yeah. It was cool. Let's see that truck uh whoa, that's a great photo. Getting some air. See that the truck what? That truck, op that uh, 11 oh, viewed thing right there. The semi? That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, they had that set up. That was Pitbull tire. So they make, you know, full scale tires, full scale. But they make real tires for Jeeps and trucks and off roading and stuff, but they also make RC tires. So that's why they were there. Ah, okay. Awesome. That'd be cool to be in charge of that rig driving around the country. Yeah, that's awesome. So there's the Altera. There's the Altera, me and Jason Merkel. Oh, wait. I didn't even know that was him because of the beard. Yeah. He's all, like, super skinny. Is the Optera his baby? Uh, No, but that was his that he had was going to maiden right then. So I didn't get to fly it because he was doing it himself. But The recent scuttle on this is the low battery time, and then people are like, well, you know, you can make it fly maybe 30 minutes if you put in the right battery and, yeah. and manage your throttle. No big. Wait, holy cow. Is that what's his name on the moped there? It be. is, yeah. He made me take. He's like, take this and send it to Jim. <laughs> ah, he looks pretty good. The, you know him, right? He's a, yeah. he oh, used yeah. to be every yeah. set. We see him. We've known him for years. And then we've got so Jace did night shows. They did night flying with all the Horizon planes, and then Jace kind of finished it off with this. And there was a fireworks show on Saturday night at the end. I don't want to jinx Jace, but I've never seen him put it in at one of these shows. Yeah, it gets it's, so close. I mean. Yeah, what does he call that? Rifle rolls, where he rolls right yeah, on top of there. Just it's insane. Oh, here's where they were doing the. Uh, there's the ramp. So they were hitting yeah. this ramp and landing way out in the cornfield. And here's one. I got one of a shot of it. One in the air. <laughs> <laughs> way oh down God. up there. Right? It was nuts. Then we had a uh, float fly. They don't have a lake at the field, but when it rains, you can uh, float fly off the runway. Their shirts do look a lot like our shirts. I mean, not that shirt, but in yeah. general, the design. Like the, yeah, well, everybody's wearing. And then they had blue T-shirts and stuff too. And then that's one of those. Is that a Havoc? That big jet? No, that was a. Uh, this was one of the F-16s. I got you. I don't know what brand it was or who made it. That guy that was. He was crushing cars, jumping over them, put on a nice, neat little show after after the rain. Uh, you know what you should do, Lane, is an A-team van. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. You could take it to shows. I can't remember what they oh, called it. It was like a pro line light parade or something, but they had all the all the yeah. trucks with lights just walking and driving down the runway. I want to know who sat around and came up with all of these ideas because that's a lot so of stuff. much. Yeah, for spectators, for hobbyists, it it really is just a great family fun event and a celebration of RC. Like I said before, it's just come out and play, enjoy it, see cool things you've never seen before, have a good time. They did a fantastic job putting it together. So I'm, who are these two guys in the sunset here at the very end? Oh, this was <laughs> we were sitting behind them and and it was I don't know one that's of the guys close to me was just talking about how romantic that was. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty romantic. Look, they have a little <laughs> wing in between them and the sky. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful evening. <laughs> there you go, guys. That's it. Awesome. Looks like a great event. Yeah, I can't wait for next year. Already, it was so much fun. So Jason, you wanted to talk about a, uh, you know what? I'll do this first. Let me bring this up. And 
and share my screen. I always say things I don't need to be saying. I could just do it, you know. Is that everyone? All right, you see it, Jason? Oh, I was looking at my screen. Uh, I do, yes. This is sad. So, okay, I'm presenting. Good um, right there. John Troder. Many of you may know who John was, and some of you may not. John, uh, actually, the story here goes over everything. His dad was, uh, in fact, let's take a look historically in the 60s. His dad uh, was Walt. His name was Walt. And I believe he wrote, yes, for Model Airplane News. And so John grew up in RC. And um, I met John probably, I guess, the first time I met him. Let's see if I, I stole some of my own photos here. Anyway, John created kind of a mini triple tree. It's called Clover Creek. It's in Toon, Tennessee. This is a little bit of a view. So it has all the white fences and uh, bleachers. And then it also has a. Uh, let's see if we have, well, it has this interior uh, house where he has camps. And so he would bring in kids. Miss Ashley uh, worked the camps as well, as well as David Mosier and Miss Tina would always cook for everybody. And so here he is teaching them. Uh, uh, what is it? Just the IMAC, right? Yeah. I'm at camp. Yeah. Right. So here is uh, John with David and that might be Gil in the background. And then Miss Ashley and John. And so you would always see John. Man, I really thought I had more photos than this. You would always see John at the field. This I'll talk about this in a second. Uh, or at uh, big competitions all over the country. And he would uh, take these kids or meet meet them. He would They would go to camp all summer and learn the ins and outs of how to be a great pilot. And then they would always place well at events. And so John was a mentor for a lot of these people. And uh, this is John with Miss Tina. Um, I took this at Joe Nall a few years ago, and it was such a good shot that every year I would try to catch them and take more good shots. I did not take the shot, but uh, this is them. They had a pool. So the other cool part was the first year I went, um, I would cover the event all day, and then I would come up to the pool with my laptop and then write the stories and upload the photos while sitting around the pool. In this pool, um, the guy from DA got in here and they were chicken fighting and, uh, there was a girl that was chicken fighting and, uh, I'd never met her before. And her name was Ashley and she was a fly low girl. And so this is actually, uh, when I met miss Ashley. And so John passed away this week and I guess it was sudden. I certainly wasn't aware of any impending, uh, situation happening. And uh, a lot of people have replied, not to just this story, but all over the internet. And it's kind of a big deal. The great news, and I didn't speak about this in the podcast too much. All right, I'm sorry, in the feature, because I don't have, I didn't want to call anyone. I know they're busy and they have things to take care of, but um, Ashley and David Mosier uh, lived on Clover Creek. And I think it was John's way to get everything prepped for when he was gone to keep everything moving and going in the camps and the events and all that stuff. And so I didn't write it because I didn't want to write anything that I didn't have the facts on, but uh, I know that that's essentially how it should be moving forward. And hopefully I'll have that information and we can talk more about it. But yeah. if you want, if you want to check out the story, I have the whole history of the place and uh, all the competitions John was in and the TOC and, um, and then people just pay their respects here. So, uh, just noting the loss of a really good friend of the hobby. Very sad day. Yep. And then we actually lost uh, somebody from our local club here. Same day. Yeah. He said something right before he died that it stuck with me. He said, I'm sick of being sick. And yeah. uh, I thought well, that's pretty poignant. You know, that's, you gotta take that seriously. And yeah. The photos they were showing, I was like, wait, I couldn't. And then when they showed him at the field flying, I was like, oh, that guy, you know, I know that guy. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Good dude, too. We, well, we lost and, a friend of mine here. The first guy I met in Nebraska that flew RC, uh, uh -huh. Aaron Gardner, 41, 42 years old, passed away uh, while we were down in Texas. They, they had his funeral. So about two weeks ago. What did we it, lose what, him to? Uh can uh what do you call it? congestive heart failure wow um at 40 41 and 
his wife called me up and asked me to come and get his airplanes and, and get them to people who would be happy with them. Yeah. So uh, that kind of thing at that age, there's nothing. You, it's just on you. You know, it's genetics, I think. Yeah, just bad luck. Dang. But heck of a nice guy, though. Well, the life is short. And uh, John is a great example of living. I mean, he went out there and did it. He built a field. He, uh, I say in the article when I went out there, it was everything he loved in one place. It was great people, lots of land, classic cars. He had everything, man. Uh, he didn't have everything, but he had a lot of iconic stuff in the barn. And then the pool, and it was very nice setup. So. If you're going to, if you're going to exit, you know, have all the stuff you love around you. And that's exactly what he did. Jason, you wanted to talk about a new something or other from somebody. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm pretty excited about it. I don't know if it's going to turn into reality or not. Let me do a screen share. So we all know DJI owns the drone market. And boom, boom. Boom. This is pretty neat. Parrot. You may have heard of Parrot, seen some of their drones, like the Bebop and stuff. Traditionally, they've been kind of a like toy quality, you know. Yeah, like a sharper image. Type. Yeah. Like really, you know, kind of cheap and toy quality and not like really great for prosumer kind of stuff. But this, what do they call it? Anifa? Is that how you say it? I don't even know how you say it. Anafi, Anafa, something like that. Anyway, this thing is the first competitor to like the Mavic from DJI right. that I've seen that is very intriguing and interesting. Um, it folds up like the Mavic, well, not like the Mavic, but it folds up and it's longer, but it, you know, it's really thin and portable and fits in a bag. But, you know, it's really, uh, you can see how big it is here. It's not very big, kind of like the Mavic's really small. But it has some really unique features. So it's got a 4K HDR camera, a three-axis gimbal, and the gimbal actually can tilt 180 degrees uh, vertically. So you can look straight down, wow. you know, all the way out forward, and then all the way straight up as well without seeing any props or obstructions in the view. So it gives you more options for shooting if you wanted to go under a bridge and look up at it or something similar to that. It provides you know a better view in some cases like that. Now it also has a 2.8 times, I guess it's optical zoom. It says lossless. So I, I don't think it's going to be a digital zoom, um, but you can actually zoom in and not lose or degrade any of the image quality, which is pretty fantastic and not something you see in a drone this size. It flies for like 25 minutes. So it flies longer than the Mavic. It's got a two and a half mile range, which is right on par. Wow. Um, with like the Mavic Air. How much is it? Farther. It's only six ninety nine. dollars mm -hmm. It's better priced or right around the same price as a base Mavic. Um, but it is, you know, it's all going to come down to the image quality. You can shoot 21 megapixel stills um, with it if, if you do the vertical thing. Um, but 4K HDR, it's 4K at 30. And one area where the Mavic beats it is in uh, high frame rate stuff where the Mavic could do like 1080 at like 96 frames a second, um, which looks pretty poor due to the just the sensor that's on it. Uh, this will only do 1080 at 60, um, but Nick, still, that's pretty good. Nick asks Wi-Fi or 5.8. Yeah, and it has some great technology. They call artificial intelligence inside, so it has a lot of the similar um, – follow me orbit, you know, kind of flight modes um, that people would want to use. Uh, Does so it have I'm selfie like, mode? Because I need selfie mode. It's got like a geo fence, a smart return to home. <laughs> selfie mode is pretty cool. I'm sure it does. Yeah, I'm sure it does. <laughs> but it's got this uh, cool controller that kind of folds up and then you can stick your phone in and it plugs in just like the, uh, you know, like a Mavic does to its device. What so I like better about this is having the screen up top versus on the bottom. Like you do with a Mavic, you have to pull out the sides and stick your phone on the bottom. I like having the screen up top. It's easier to kind of see and use at the same time. So um, did, did you say it was 5.8? Uh, what do you mean? Is it, does it broadcast on 5.8? No, it's a, it's a, well, I, it's kind of, yeah, it's 5.8, but it's Wi-Fi. So it's, it's similar to the Mavic. Mavic uses a, the OcuSync, um, but the regular, the Mavic Air, I don't think has OcuSync. I think it's a 5.8 um, regular Wi-Fi. 
transmission, but it is, um, it's putting out, let me go back to the specs here. I'm looking on my other page. So it is doing, uh, it's 802.11 ABG and N, but it's, it can actually operate from 2.4 to 5.8. So it might be switching. If it gets out long range, it'll switch to 2.4, but it is uh, doing a live HD stream at 720p. We don't know what the lags is like, if it's comparable to the DJI stuff or not, or if it's really laggy, but yeah, um, that's something to be determined. But as long as if the if the image quality, the bit rate is 100 megabits per second on the video. So if this image quality is anywhere close to what you get out of a Mavic, um, this has some serious potential to be really popular and amazing because it's got a lot good going for it. We should keep an eye on it and keep pulling out stories as they uh, pop up so we can keep everyone informed. So I'm just, yeah, real excited for it. You should try to get one for a view, Jason. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. They're notoriously not good for replying since they are more of a, uh, a store-based, not a hobby-based uh, company. But Hey, um, Mike McD asks, Lane, are you coming back to Texas for Flight Fest in October? Uh, that's the intent. Nice. Uh, we'll be there, and we will also be at the Flight Fest in Ohio. So oh, hopefully yeah. we'll see you down there, Mike. And speaking of events, um, I wanted to share something that I put up. I put it one up on RC Groups today and one up on Flying Giants yesterday. Presenting to everyone. And it is Hobby Guys Joe Nall Experience. Let me say, I do Joe Nall. And this guy did Joe Nall so well that uh i mean like he took care of the photo business I'm, that's all i'm going to say <laughs> he came down from israel it was his first trip and that of course is jace and somebody flying a slick and he posted tons of photos from his joan all experience and as we all know joan all was sort of canceled but a lot of people got there on the very first day it was just shortened yeah it was still a few days of fun Right. And by this photo flood, you would never know that any time was missed because he's got it all. This is on the homepage of flying giants. And then you can also find it now on RC groups. I went ahead and just copied it over because, you know, uh, FG people are not always RC groups people and the other way around. So uh, a lot of iconic photos, these look like photos I've taken, but it's also what everybody wants to see when they get there. Like uh smoky, Smoky planes on the water. Smoke. Yeah. Can you play that? Uh, you know what? I, I never learned that on purpose, but I, I bet I could find it. I'm doing spaghetti, uh, a spaghetti Western music right now. No way. Yeah. What is spaghetti Western. Like a uh, fistful of dollars. Uh, the, uh, the old 60s spaghetti, uh, the uh, ho, ho, ching, ching, bam, but down, down, bam, but down, down, that kind of stuff. Gotcha. So uh, I, I, I got a reverb pedal that actually uh, does all the, the drippy stuff. And, um, but then I realized I, there were notes in these, in this music. I'm like, I, where's the note. It'd be like being on a piano, but the note that you hear isn't anywhere on the piano keyboard, you know? So I realized that I don't have a baritone guitar, which is what they use on spaghetti Western music. So now I'm on the hunt. How many guitars do you own currently? I don't know, but not more than 20. Wow. <laughs> Which is crazy that I don't own a damn baritone guitar. How does that work? There's Kike. Well, it's not Kike, but a Kike plane just went by. There's Noel. How many cigar box and guitars? Noel and Ashley. I never can remember anyone's name. So I have no good uh, cigar box guitars because they make me mad. I also <laughs> uh, don't like ukuleles at all. Like they're offensive to me, even though I don't know why. <laughs> Have you ever played one of your guitars on, on the podcast? I have. Sometimes uh, we'll open up with me playing the guitar. The last time I did it, I realized no one could see my guitar. So no one knew what the heck was happening. Nice. Uh, I didn't realize until after I watched the video. That was I played a bluegrass version of Rocket Man by Elton John. Nice. Well, Hornets should... had a good explanation. He said that Spaghetti Western is like lasagna Western, but narrower. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, there we have it. So if you didn't make Joan all, uh, the hobby guy really uh, stepped up and he wrote me and he said, I would be honored for you to put this on the site. And I was like, I would be honored to put it on the site. So we did. 
So, Lane, is there any RC news from you this week? Is it all car based? No, there's RC stuff. Uh, I'm going to try this screen share thing. I've never done that. So I'm guessing I just click this button, right? <laughs> Be careful. Don't show emails. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Let's try this. Your tabs. There's all kinds Check of that. Okay. Can you see this? It takes a second to switch over, but I can't see anything yet. You have to select whether you're going to do the entire screen or a specific uh, window. And then, oh. okay. Uh, let's go a specific window. Right, let's just hit share and see what happens. There you go. Okay. What are you seeing? I'm seeing me. I okay. See now, it. here you go. Can you see that? Down it locked. Yes. Yeah. They uh, are you very familiar with their company? Well, Down and Lock is a sponsor of FlyingGiants.com, or at least they were. Well, I've had the opportunity to speak with uh, Mitch Stott yesterday, who owns Down. Oh Lock. yes, I talk to them every year, Joe Nald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, me and Mitch were talking, and we're, I'm actually doing some laser cutting for him, uh, for his mother. But that's another <laughs> issue. And I'd heard of Down and Locked, but I'd never really looked through their stuff. And phenomenal electric retracts. Uh, I mean, their stuff is just absolutely top notch. Uh, and you can go through, obviously, you know, you guys can look at their website yourself, but uh, just, I mean, they've got every size and everything that you need. Uh, we ended up talking about cars for about 40 minutes, but, uh, and uh, we talked about his retracts for a while, but they've got some really, really high quality stuff. So, anyway, if you are in the market for any retracts or upgrades, uh, then definitely take a look at Down and Locked. So now, how do I? Oh, stop sharing. Yeah, stop sharing. There. So. All right, you got a little piece in there. Yeah. Right. So I, I just thought that was really cool. And Mitch, I mean, absolutely great guy. Uh, did you know he raced pro mods for his whole life? I might have known that. I'll tell you yeah. something you don't know. My dad, when he was in Korea, or actually. Uh, during Korea was stationed in Hawaii and he, uh, raced, uh, dirt tr circle track. <laughs> That's cool. And I said, why did you stop? And he said, cause one day I didn't make that one turn. And he said he flew off the backside of the track and just, he said it was really high in the air. And he said, it's the last time he ever did. <laughs> Probably a good idea. Yeah. Jason, you're, you're headed out. We're at the end of the podcast here. I got to thank our podcast sponsor, Hobby King at hobbyking.com. Go to hobbyking.com. Uh, Jason, where are you going? So I'm heading up to St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm going to be uh, flying a contest the next three days. DLG tomorrow and the big sail planes like I had behind me a couple weeks ago uh, for Saturday and Sunday. So, Can you I'm say that again? I'm going to be. I'm going to be what? I'm going to be. I'm going to be. Yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be. So you need to get one of your old DLGs you don't like very much and sell it to me. Well, I only have two and I need a backup and I'm a lefty. Oh, ah. <laughs> that's not helpful. So most people uh, can't I, launch my airplanes. I love DLGs, but I, and I've flown a couple of them, but I haven't bought one yet. So there it was. Oh, wait. Silence. silence. Do you have, do you have any, uh, CR 10 updates, Jimmy T? Oh, shoot. We almost forgot to talk about it. Well, I have bad news for everyone. The CR-10 works great. Don't get me wrong. But I have not printed anything in a couple of months now. And uh, it's, I guess what happened was I was always having to redo the bed and start over. Or I was making these uh, paper uh uh, paper <laughs> towel holder oh, for okay. my wife, right? Yeah, and, right. Uh, and then she'd be like, I broke it. And then I'd make another one and I broke it. And then I'd try to make it better. And she broke it. And then she quit asking. And I said, what happened? She said, I just ordered one from Amazon. It came in a day. <laughs> I said, well, that's about how long it takes to print. And then it dawned on me, the print time versus ordering from Amazon versus <laughs> cost. I was like, huh, maybe this is stupid. Um, now, if you need one-offs, if you need a thing for your guitar, like a skull head or something like that, or you need to make a camera mount, that's exactly what I think it's made for. You need to build an, you need to do print one of the airplanes. Mm. You need to print one of the 3D printed airplanes and make it fly. As a thing, I challenge you. I challenge you, Jim T. 
to pre- let, a 3D airplane. Luckily, I'm past the ability to challenge me, and like I get like, oh, um, I don't think I am. <laughs> I think I'll just go ahead and order a plane. Just so, don't put the don't put the airplane on the dash in the summertime in Nashville. Oh, right. No, no, no. So it's sitting here. And I actually, uh, did I make that for my son? My son will send me stuff periodically and say, can you make this? And usually it's something crazily intricate that I know will take years to make. So, um, let's see you know what's coming handy for me Yeah, is, you know, our, my best friend has nine children. So there's like a birthday, like every, all the time, there's always a birthday coming up. Uh, like, you know, I can't buy nine plus presents every year for everybody it's just like hey i can print stuff for nothing you know and, and they like it and it's cool and they get a toy and and i get to give them something so it works that's good and and, and lane you're a laser printer guy you have giant lasers right yes yes 30 36 by 48 is what our bed size is so that's a whole nother deal i did see this i did see a head somebody sent me a video where you could take the head of the cr10 and make it a laser cutter yeah cool it's yeah. all the same uh, stepper motors and everything, how it works. Right. You just need a laser. Yeah, they're not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and for one that size, and I don't know, how big is the CR-10? What's what's the bed 400 size? 400 by 400. Millimeters? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you'd run a very, very, very low power. You'd be able to, I mean, I couldn't even watt. see. 40 watt, really? No, I don't know. I, I wouldn't imagine. So I'd guess probably 20 or so, you know, cut paper and, you know, really, really thin stuff. I'd say I would love to have one that would, I could create a design and then cut a piece of leather and then burn the design into the leather. Then I sew that into a wallet or something like that. That'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, I have a friend of mine who is probably going to buy my old laser because we're running two and uh, we're going to sell the old one and then purchase a new one. And that's all she wants to do is leather. Huh. The reason I didn't do it is I thought my wife would kill me because the house would smell like burnt flesh all the time. Well, no, you have to have a, a good exhaust system. Yep. yep, yep. Um, of course, our exhaust system is big, expensive, and noisy. Uh, but since I moved it outside, it's not terrible. So, But yeah, leather does have an interesting smell when you burn it on a laser. Not good. That's what the house yeah. smells. It's kind of like I've I've been challenging people. I want to tattoo somebody, which is more scarring, but nobody's got enough guts to stick their arm under this thing. <laughs> I've seen that video. I've seen somebody do that. Yeah. it. I, I got I got zapped by it one time. Uh, I had a piece of something flip up inside the machine. I reached in to get it, and oh. the laser was running, and it hit me in the side of my hand just for a split second, uh, and that was between the because you have the mirror and that or the, i'm sorry the tube hits a mirror to a mirror to a mirror to a lens and that was in between the second and third mirror it wasn't even focused holy uh, cow and it's the get and, and i i swear it went to the bone because it took about two three months to heal that little spot in my hand holy and it was on a low power setting um, so you do not want to shoot yourself with this laser and focused this thing will cut through one inch acrylic in a single pass <laughs> so, you literally could cut your, your fingers off easily. Or burn your eyeball right out. Yeah, so we keep the lid closed most of the time when we're running it. Man, that's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Lasers are cool. Uh, ben Warren down in Texas, are you familiar with him? Um, nope. Ben has a really cool accent. Uh, I can't remember where he's from. But he uh, he does a lot of, I think, burnt wood designs is the name of his site, I think. He did the Jeeps, those quad Jeeps for Matt Vodron. Do you uh-huh. remember seeing those? Yeah, yeah. Uh, his laser is interesting because oh, it's it's huge. I want to say six or eight feet, uh, and it's an open design like a like a gantry type, and so he just set the material on it, and then the machine just runs over the top, um, which then you'd have to obviously have some kind of eye protection because the laser does scatter. But uh, that's the type of laser that you could build, Jim. Uh, just an open flat bed with the laser on uh, on uh, stepper motors, kind of like a normal CNC hot wire or something. Yeah, I've dropped uh, exacto knives right into my foot, so I don't know. It sounds like maybe not the best idea. Uh, yeah, we'll keep you away from the lasers. Or the I, lasers. I'm spoiled by uh, Horizon and their awesome uh, take it out of the box and fly it technology. I want I did, instant gratification. I did get a new airplane this week. Ah, all right. Um, the Phoenix Models Edge 540. Uh, yeah. 30 cc and it arrived in the mail yesterday 
pulled it out of the box and looked at it and put it back in the box and it's standing in the corner <laughs> right <laughs> next to my Phoenix model Strega and my Yak, uh, which I have not built any of the three. Um, there is, and I don't know if it's a wise idea to promote, but I will anyway, a gentleman by the name of Danny McDonough. Uh, and have you seen uh, the, he has a Facebook page. It is Boston Bandit RC. And what he's doing is he's raising money and he's donating money to the Shriners is what he's doing. So he'll purchase airplanes and quads and he buys kudas and he buys our organizers and things like that from us. And then he does a giveaway. So he'll have say 25 spots at $20 a piece. You send the 20 bucks and you get your name on the list. As soon as they're sold out, he does a drawing live and gives away everything uh, that, uh, that he uh, took all the, you know. That sounds a little illegal, I hate to say. It's it's not because he's, uh, well, it's really nonprofit, I guess, and uh, okay. Okay. donating yeah. to charity. And it's a really, really neat thing. Uh, he likes to say winner, winner, chicken dinner a lot, which kind of bugs me. But uh, it doesn't make any sense. You don't play uh, PUBG then, I guess. I play what? PUBG. What's that? PUBG Player is Player Unknowns Battlegrounds. It's, it's the a Battle Royale mode. It's the hottest uh, online game right now. And uh, when you actually, and there are 100 people start, one person is the winner. One person that, uh, survives. And you win the chicken dinner shirt or award. Well, my son plays those games. And I'll go play with him every now and then just to find out how bad I am. 16-year-olds uh, will annihilate you at video games. Yeah. And, and then laugh at you for it. Yeah. <laughs> Millennials. <laughs> he's not even a millennial. He's too young for that. Yeah, he's just he. The kid is phenomenal with RC stuff, and uh, he just blows my mind. Where are you going next week, Lane? Um, I am leaving on Sunday for Aberdeen, or I'm sorry, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So if any of you live in Sioux Falls, give me a shout while I'm up in South Dakota, and uh, we'll get together and and maybe play with some airplanes or something. Um, I'll be up there for a week doing uh, non RC. Well, not true. I'll be building some airplanes, but uh, uh, my new job starts on Monday. Um, oh, yeah. after, after that one, I think our next event, we have a, an event here in Grand Island, Nebraska. And I think that might be our next one, unless we go to Iowa. I think there's an event coming up in Iowa, but if anybody hears about events, please email me at uh, lanesplanes at gmail.com. Send me an email and let us know, especially if they're anywhere within mm, 500 miles of Nebraska. Uh, South Dakota, North Dakota, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Iowa, Colorado, anywhere around here. We love going to events and it's hard to find them. Sometimes the AMA uh, magazine doesn't have them and it's, it's just tough to find good events to go to. So, uh, awesome. yeah, let us know where events are. We'll go. But uh, I actually got an email from a, a listener. Colton is his name. Uh, got it this morning. He was flying into Grand Island. He heard that this is, he heard on the podcast and he says, I'd, I'd love to meet you and, and go fly. He wants to see my 150 mile an hour CUDA. So, uh -huh, nice. Nice. so I'm going to meet up with him and go fly this weekend. So Jason, are you're packing uh, today and leaving tomorrow? Is that what's the, happening? The car's packed right now. I'm literally going to jump in the road in two minutes when we're done. All right. Well, you're two minutes late already. There you go. I'm going to go in the backyard and look for another turtle or skunk. That's Ooh. really my only plan right now. Hey, oh, I want to, yeah. I want to, yeah, uh, the, nobody got hurt. And the dog, we, my mom's who watches everything we do on Facebook, sent me this stuff, the spray on stuff. It, it worked, man. What's it called? Uh, you want me to go get it? Jason has to talk or right, somebody has to, I'll be right back. Yeah, my, my boxer decided that a skunk was her friend about two months ago. And so uh, we opened up the door that evening to let her in and went, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Not so she got to, yeah, so she got to hang out in the shop for, for the night. And then the next day, uh, you know, we tried vinegar and all kinds of stuff. We read that this is the way to do it. And so yeah. we tried a bunch of stuff. And it took her about 10 baths and four days to finally get rid of that smell. Wow. But she got it good. And the skunk, well, let's just say he was, uh, he didn't make it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've never been uh, skunked knocking on the wood here. Uh, that's not fun. Gotten lucky. Pure air. Pure <laughs> Sponsored by Fire. Pure Air. <laughs> Powerful skunk odor eliminator. Eliminate. Yeah. yeah. All this could be yours if the price is right. 
So uh, we sprayed it on the dog, and then we washed the dog, and then we were like, wow. And then she still smelled a little skunky, so we hit her again. I got to say, uh, not not as bad as the last time, for sure. Well, that's a good public service announcement. Yeah, if you got dogs. <laughs> it's usually three in the morning when I get to wash the dogs. I was pretty excited. It was only like nine at night. Yeah. Ours did hers at about 10, 30, or 11. So. That's still not bad. Hey, I yeah, want to thank friends. And they always do it when it's 20 degrees outside. I want to yeah. thank everybody in the live chat to hang out that hang out. Oh my God. That hung out with us this week. I want to thank Lane. Good words. Yes, words. Me talk pretty one day. I want to <laughs> thank Jason Cole, who's about to head out and compete uh with his gigantic uh cell planes. And I want to thank all of you that are listening to us in the future and not live at this very moment. Um, if you have any questions you want us to discuss or go over, and maybe I didn't go over the C10 enough, I don't know, but um, feel free to shoot us a PM or contact us one way or the other. You can leave a message in the YouTube. I monitor that on a daily basis. And that is all. And Lane, I swear I'm going to get your head on last week's uh, uh, podcast. Okay. Uh, one of the listeners said it looks like my car is sitting on the shelf. <laughs> Does it look like the car is sitting on the shelf? Yeah. You said that was an RC car. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So anyway, Jason, have a safe trip and uh, have fun mm -hmm. down there in St. Louis. Good luck. Let us know how you do. Yes, sir. Mike McNee, keep those hands in good shape. We, we're glad that you're back. All right. I'm Jim T. Graham and we're gone. I'm hitting the button. Somebody down now.